How do you define yourself? If someone asks you about your identity, do you say you're British, a British Asian, a British African? And can we say we even know what it means to be British when we live in such a multicultural society? Join me for real stories, real issues, real views. This is Real Talk. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Khalib Khan, and on today's Real Talk, we're discussing identity and what it means to you. Now, as people travel the globe, the societies we live in become more and more diversified. Some people see this as a positive thing. At the end of the day, the more we understand about each other, the better we can get along. But how far should we go to integrate ourselves and at what cost? On today's show, we're discussing what it means to be British and if our cultural commonalities can bring us together towards a more unified society. On today's show, we've got Dan Whittle, executive of the Young Fabians, a policy think tank. Also, councillor David Callaghan, the deputy mayor of Sutton, and also Kutsi Rashid, a human rights lawyer and lecturer at King's College London. Now, I'm sure everyone here in the studio has got plenty they want to say, but first of all, let's take a listen to the word on the street. Queuing in line, red letter boxes, fish and chips and cricket are all associated with British stereotypes. But what do they really tell us about who we are? Britishness means so many things to so many people that we can ask ourselves the question, does it actually mean anything at all? As the makeup of British society changes with immigration and multicultural identities, ideas about the notion of Britishness are changing too. In the interest of a united Britain, does the UK have to return to its core British values, or should Britain's identity change with its population? Thanks, mate. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Should a British identity even exist? Britain is made up of so many cultures today. In London alone, it is said that there are people originating from every country in the world. We're asking the public what they identify Britishness as. What does it mean to be British? Um, meaning that you support your queen and country, I suppose, in terms of being, feeling proud. I'm still really finding out what it means to be British. <laughs> like, anyone can be British now. Yeah, okay. And it's like, does it make you British if you were born in this country but you live somewhere else? Goodness, yeah, I think I think it is relevant because I think more as Europe changes um, and becomes a Europe of the regions, I think everybody's personal identity is relevant and important. Yeah. I think it marks quite a lot about who you are and what you do. It's identifying yourself with the people who are well, basically just nationals here. It's knowing the language, it's knowing the people. Do you feel British? Yeah, well, I am because I was born here and um, my history is like British anyway, so... Yeah. I'm Anglo-Indian, so your kind of connections with British ancestors and Irish. From our answers and opinions on the streets, it's obvious to see there's more to being British than just religion or culture. It's not just about stereotypes or citizenship. It's about living under the same set of values and moving in the same direction. Back to the studio. Well, there were some really interesting views there, and I want to throw this straight to the panel. Dan, what do you think it is to be British? I think it's really clear from the video that what we haven't managed to do is find a shared vision, a shared mission for this country, a shared set of values actually. And um, I think there's a couple of reasons why that might be the case. And we, we saw it on there. There's a lot of diverse views on what it is to be British. And so if we define that in an exclusive way, then we're excluding some people. And the other reason is because as British people, we don't necessarily like always discussing what's good about this country. We're quite modest in that way. Um, and I think that that leaves us in a situation where we're open for people who are extremists, particularly, to actually hijack the idea of Britishness. Uh, and I think that's worrying. I think the government needs to get on with um, enshrining a set of values. Those values could be, for example, tolerance, 
uh, justice, the rule of law, respect. Um, those are things that I think are important, but obviously we'll hear from the, from the audience about what they think is important. Okay. David, if someone says that to be British, your forefathers have to have come to fund this country, how would you approach that? I would totally disagree. Um, I would say, how far, first of all, how far back do you go? Because um, most of us, if you go back far enough, have come to this country at a different time. So um, I, would, I would very much challenge that view. For, for me, the, the, the thing that I've uh, gathered from the video is that there are a range of views. And that's why I think that this, this, one of the main characteristics of this country is that we should have free speech, and we do have free speech. People are, are able to express their opinions. We have democracy. Um, we have tolerance. We have those things. And for me, that's what's, uh, that's what's um, so great about being British. Okay. Now, Kutsi, you're a lawyer. So in legal terms, how can we define what it is to be British? I think when it comes to the, the legal aspect of it, I think there are certain legal definitions that are necessary for the good administration of the system. But I think when it comes to the concept of Britishness, I think it's a much more political, social concept. Um, when it comes to what, what it means to be British, um, I think regard has to be had to the tradition and the history of the particular country, um, the development of ideas and values that over time have been enshrined and inculcated within our constitutional framework, um, ideas that we've, we've heard uh, mentioned already, tolerance and respect, democracy, liberalism, these are particularly British values and it's important to remember that Britain has always been um, the pioneer of human rights, for example, in the modern world. Um, so these are all aspects of what it means to be, to be British, I think. Okay, well, let's open it up to the audience. Um, can I get your views on what you think it is to be British? Um, in my opinion, to be British, it shouldn't be just one core set of values. Um, as Dan said, it should be open. It should allow others to incorporate their ideas, their cultures, their motives into the British society, so such as is in my family. I have two different backgrounds. My mother's Asian, my father's from North Africa. So what being British, what should and has happened is that Asians and North Africans, um, other Europeans have allowed, it's allowed them to incorporate their culture, their ideas into being British. So you could be known as a British Asian, British Arab, and I think that is the core fundamental of being British. So even with a dual nationality, you still feel British yourself? Yes, even though I was born here, <clears throat> my culture, my heritage, I still find it to be from an Asian background, from a North African background, but as a, from a nationality perspective, I find myself to be British, yes. Okay, okay. Um, what about your views? What do you think it is to mean to be British? Is it a core set of values or is it more than that? Um, the term of being British is uh, very hard to describe. Um, as we saw on the video, everyone had a very different approach to what they thought uh, the term British meant. This, this gives testimony to the fact that there is no core set of values because Every single person, especially sitting in this room, in the whole world has a different idea and different concept of what a certain country means to them. Um, Britain as a whole, London especially, um, is such a multicultural community and this is what it means to be British. There are so many different cultures coming together, this is what makes Britain. Right, okay. So, if I can turn to you, as a student, do you find it important to be British or are you comfortable in your own identity? Um, I consider myself to be sort of half British, half Asian, I would say. I was brought up in Britain, um, I was educated here as well, and so I have been sort of instilled with those values. But at the same time at home, I'm sort of, you know, brought up in an Asian sort of uh, family. And so I do have, yeah, I sort of have the best of both worlds, I think. And I think the best term would be British Asian. So, Kutsi, what do you think about that? Just, just picking up on, on the point that was made there at the end of um, having the best of both worlds, I think that encapsulates it perfectly um, because it's essentially a case of being able to pick out the best aspects of any culture and absorbing it within oneself and improving oneself. Um, historically, why people travel was to learn about other cultures and to adopt that themselves. We don't need to travel and do that now. We can see around ourselves all these different cultures, all these different identities, and we can take that on ourselves. And so rather than it being a danger, and rather than people who have um, indigenously been here, for example, rather than fearing new cultures coming in, it should be welcomed and appreciated and learnt from.